normal from in a so in a snowflake schema where a star schema you are strictly into a denormalized structure there is no normal form it is strictly like your single family home if i say in the real time scenario how is it different i will tell you the story here my hero has built a palace he has a five bedrooms and he has a hall everyone are entering through the same hallway let us say i have my little son now who is grown up he is 15 years old he started going to night clubs he comes late night he feels very uncomfortable to walk through the uh, the living room and then pass my bedroom and go to his bedroom so he asked me pop this is not possible i have my friends visiting and it is very disgusting to make an entry at night 12 o'clock between uh, everyone there is a separate door for him back end door that is no flaking you are creating him a separate route there is no dependency to enter from the midway he can enter separately from the back end his door is only dependent for his bedroom no one can access anything from his his own door getting me it is the snowflaking no that is not allowed actually if you are trying to add one more fact there the model will fail let me show you the architecture actually uh, uh let me i'll have to run through few slides but i'm going to do it because that is the right time we you had a good question so we'll have to take up that uh, i will not ask you to wait until the last minute so this is a this is what you are seeing this is the actual snowflake so dimensions are normalized now if you look at the product dimension earlier i had only one product now i have degenerated or separated it i have branded separately a product so i have a brand dimension so in here if you have a new brand entry you will not touch everything you will have entry only in the brand dimension why will you touch the package dimension storage dimension category dimension department dimension and shelf life uh, type dimension you will not touch anything all you got is a brand the brand has a dependency in the category dimension and department dimension so when you make an entry into department dimension surely it has to be dependent on the category which is also dependent on the brand which is dependent on the product dimension you getting me that is how it is hierarchical they have all the keys in them if there is no entry in the product dimension about a brand you cannot enter a brand if you don't have an entry in the brand you cannot enter a category to it if you don't have a category you cannot enter a dimension uh, department dimension for it that is how it is so if you see here the fact table is still the same the point of sale retail sales transactional fact which is on the left hand side that is still connected only to the product dimension why we have this degenerated or a snowflake dimension is the purpose is business user wanted it like that he wanted to query based on each brand he wanted to query based on the shelf life type dimension yeah we are all here we are able to hear you hello hello <coughs> any problem guys so Uh, let us give it a shot for Syed for a couple of minutes. I think he will be able to join back. So it is almost eleven o'clock. We are only going to be in session for one more hour, guys. So did you get answer for your question about the snowflaking, guys? Was the question by Syed? I don't know who asked that question actually I didn't monitor Yeah so when he has a question uh, <laughs> the actual conference doesn't like him <laughs> so it got disconnected for him uh, just kidding so that's a right question whatever he asked actually it should be like interactive guys if you start asking questions you get more out of me I like somehow I liked the class yesterday even people were asking me questions i felt very happy about it you know because i i i ran into some sessions where people will be just listening to me no questions asked but that's not, not i want 
I want people to turn interactive so that they can get more out of me. I can share only when you ask for it, right? Yeah, Syed came back, but he left on the go to meeting. He came back on the phone. Syed? No, I saw him. He left from uh, the go to meeting session. Even. Most probably he'll join back. That's okay. So in the, we are going to take more closer look of a retail sales model guys. Now I am doing a modeling session. I will show you how I, how, I, uh, how I actually do a model for a retail sales mart. So are everyone ready or uh, we have to wait for... Hey, let me do a roll call. Ashok, you there? Ashok, you able to hear me? Hilal, you there? Krishna, you there? Krishna. Krishna. Okay. And then uh, Savya, you there? Perfect. Shauri, you? Finally, Sayed. Sayed, what happened to you? Hey, Sayed, please respond. Wonderful, but you are on phone now, right? Perfect. So, yeah, are you able to understand now the snowflaking? The essence of why we go for snowflaking? Perfect. So, I'm going to continue with the retail sales. Any other questions, guys, before I proceed with the... Uh, a close look about the retail sales. Okay, so retail sales. We are going to take a very in-depth look about it. We are going to now design a data model for a retail sales industry. So it is a four-step process for designing a dimensional model. Let us see step by step how we design a, a, a dimensional model. Transactional level fact tables. We will have to define First thing is transactional level fact tables. Second is additive and non-additive fact tables. We'll have to determine all this. And then sample dimensional table attributes. Then casual dimensions such as promotion. Degenerate dimensions such as transaction ticket number. Extending an existing dimensional model. Snowflaking dimension attributes. Avoiding the too many dimension traps, surrogate keys finally. Okay, uh, it, this is not the four step process actually. What we are going to do is, we are going to look into the four step process and understand how to design it. As part of the four step dimensional modeling process, we will have to consider all the below. That is what it is. The, the actual PowerPoint misled me a little bit. So these are all the considerations we will have to make while designing a dimensional model. You will have to look at the transactional level fact tables, additive, non-additive facts, sample dimensional table attributes and, and separate them as casual dimensions and uh, separate them as promotion or degenerated dimensions and transaction ticket number, extending an external dimensional model for snowflaking dimensional attributes, avoiding too many dimension traps and surrogate keys. So you will have to evaluate all of this in the four step model so that your retail sales data mart is going to be a very effective data mart let us go forward and see the and also you'll have to look for the market based analysis you'll have to provide a market based analysis to support your data model so this is the four step process i was talking about so it is actually this has to come up before the, the other steps but it, it came out there. So first is gather the business requirements and try to build a dimensional model. In the dimensional model, first you try to understand the business process. A second thing is you define a grain, that is the granularity. A third thing is you will define the dimensions. So what is the purpose of your data warehouse is actually dimensions. And then you design the fact table. It is not that much. After you design everything, this is the first sample. This is going to be a repetitive process. You will also again look into the data realities. Go back to the business requirements. Do it redundantly, repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. 
after some time you will come up with a stable uh, data mart and the first point you won't get it so in that way your job is safe all we want is a long standing job so data warehousing is all redundant uh, process repetitive process so you stay longer in the project be happy for that so it is a repetitive process it is not one single uh, time let us look at by each step by step step 1 select the business process the first step is to design uh, of the de- in the design is to decide what business process to model by combining and uh, combining an understanding of business requirements with an understanding of available data all is do both user driven and also uh, data driven all he is telling in the first step is whatever the whatever the sentence there it is being used i actually got it from kimball it is a little bit confusing but what he says is combine both take the median of it don't go with only user user uh, driven approach or data driven approach take the median of it and proceed with the uh, building a data model in our retail case study management wants to better understand customer purchases as captured by the point of system point of sale system thus the business process we are going to model is a point of sale retail sale so we are going to not talk about the back end uh, back end of the store we are going to talk in the front end of the store where the purchase happens where the customer buys a product our retail case study is all about that we are talking about the front end point of sale the data will allow us to analyze with products which analyze what products are selling in which store on what day under what promotional conditions you see guys we see a very small advertisement it is just a little soap or a lux soap but why would aishwarya rai do for it if aishwarya rai uses a lux soap girls are are very happy about it that they are using a soap that is also been used by uh, aishwarya rai brand ambassador for lux so we'll have to analyze is it good investing in aishwarya rai we'll have to pay a crore rupees for her to get her on my promo they will evaluate it they will evaluate it depending on the sale saying aishwarya rai promotion is been introduced in the market in the august of 2010 let us see i am doing this promo until march 2011 4 months is there any increase in the sale if they find increase in the sale they invest on it or else Aishwarya Rai will retire and uh, some other Kalpana Rai will come into picture because that promotion is no more acceptable because it doesn't add any value to the business. So all they are trying to do is anal- analyze the data and see a product how did it uh, sell in particular store under what promotional conditions. In 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 U United States it is a very normal thing. Go to any shop, everything is on sale, fifty percent, sixty percent, even seventy percent. it really collapses your mind i keep asking to jc penny and macy's ever you sell a product at a full price no that is not possible in united states they will always discount you they know the customer mind and if you go to india india is a different market their people value if you give something free buy a soap will give you a bucket why would he give a bucket if you buy a soap funny right but in india things work out like that if they capture the homemakers mentality homemakers if you say a power soap product they are giving a free bucket they will buy it rather than going to a rin product 